Hello from my vacation where I just bought a new collection, or an old collection, but new to me, of Grimm's Fairy Tales. I thought I would read some of them to you. Apologies if my head moves around a bunch. I'm sitting on a yoga ball while I record this. The Three Feathers Once upon a time, there was a king who had three sons. Two were smart and clever, but the third did not talk much, was simple, and they never called him anything but Dumkin. When the king grew old and weak and began to think of his end, he did not know which of his sons should inherit the kingdom after him. So he said, Go out into the world, and the one who brings home the finest carpet shall be king after my death. That there might be no quarreling, he led the three princes in front of the palace, blew three feathers into the air, and said, As they fly, so, shall, so you shall follow. One of the feathers flew east, the other west, but the third flew straight forward, did not fly far, and dropped to the ground. Now one brother went right, the other went left, and they all laughed at Dumpkin, who had to stay right there where the third feather had fallen to the ground. Dumpkin sat down and was sad. All of a sudden, he noticed that right next to the feather was a trap door. He lifted it up and found some stairs and climbed down. He came to another door, knocked, and heard someone calling from inside. Lady green and neat, prune feet, prune feet's puppy dog. Prunes here and everywhere, quickly see who might be there. The door opened by itself, and there sat a great fat toad, surrounded by a lot of little toads. The fat toad asked him what he wanted. He answered, I would like to have the finest, most beautiful carpet. So she called over one of the young ones and said, Lady green and neat. Prune feet, prune feet's puppy dog, prunes here and everywhere, bring me that large box over there. The young toad fetched the box, and the fat toad opened it and gave Dumpkin a carpet so beautiful and fine, nothing like it could have been woven on earth, so he thanked her and climbed back out. The two others, however, had taken their youngest brother for a simpleton and did not think he would ever come up with anything. Why should we give ourselves a lot of trouble looking, they said, and each caught hold of the first shepherd's wife he met, took, rough, took the rough clothes off her back, and brought them to the king. At the same moment came Dumpkin with his beautiful carpet, and when the king saw it, he was amazed and said, By rights, the kingdom belongs to the youngest. But the two others left their father no peace and said it was impossible for Dumpkin, who had no sense at all to become king, and begged him to set a new trial, and so the father said, The one who brings home the most beautiful ring shall inherit the kingdom. Led the three brothers outside, and blew into the air the three feathers, which they were to follow. Again the two eldest went east and west, but Dumpkin's feather blew straight forward and fell on the ground, right next to the door in the earth. And so he climbed back down to the fat toad and told her that he needed the most beautiful ring. She had them bring her the big box right away and gave him a ring that glittered with brilliance and was so beautiful no goldsmith on earth could have made it. The two eldest laughed at Dumpkin, trying to find a golden ring, and took no trouble at all. Each knocked out the nails from the iron ring of an old wagon wheel and brought it to the king. But when Dumpkin showed his golden ring... The father once again said, The kingdom belongs to him. The two eldest would not give up tormenting the king until he set a third trial and made a proclamation that he should have the kingdom that he should have the kingdom who brought him the most beautiful woman. Once again he blew the three feathers into the air, and they flew as they had flown the two other times. And so Dumpkin, without further ado, went down to the fat toad and said, I am to bring home the most beautiful woman. Well, well, said the toad, the most beautiful woman, eh? That's not so easy to come by, but you shall have her all the same. She gave him a hollow carrot that was harnessed to six mice. But Dumpkin said very sadly, What am I to do with this? The toad answered, Just you set one of my little toads inside. So he took one out of the circle at random, and put her in the yellow coach. And as soon as she sat inside, she turned into the most beautiful young lady. The carrot turned into a carriage, 
and the six mice into horses, and so he kissed her and galloped off with the horses and brought her to the king. The brothers had arrived too, but they had taken no trouble to look for a beautiful woman, and each had brought home the first peasant woman he had come across. When the king saw them, he said, The youngest shall have the kingdom after my death. But the two eldest deafened the king's ears with their clamor, We cannot allow Dumpkin to be king. And they demanded that the prize should go to him whose woman could jump through the ring that hung down from the middle of the hall. Surely, they thought, the peasant woman would be good at something like this. They are strong enough, but the delicate young lady will jump herself to death. The old king agreed to this as well, and so the two peasant women jumped, and though they managed to get through, they were so clumsy they fell and broke their coarse arms and legs. Then the beautiful lady, whom Duncan had brought, leaped through as lightly as a deer, and all opposition had to come to an end. And thus Duncan received the crown, and long and wisely did he reign. And that is the end of the Three Feathers.